When we start talking about voltages, everyone wants to define everything as AC or DC. And when I tell them this is more like a static volt or a magnetic volt, they instantly get confused. Then they refer me to this, a simple representation of electromagnetic waves. It's written here as E is for the energy and then B is for the magnetic wave. Then they start talking about, well, the red actually represents the frequency and yes, the blue does represent the magnetic wave. This couldn't be more confusing. We're simply just trying to find out if something was AC or DC. This right here goes more into the understanding of how things work. However, it's still wrong. We deal with things when it comes to electricity in voltage and amps. Based on the amount of voltage you put into something versus the amount of amps, you can go anywhere from a scale from creating light to creating a magnetic coil. What compounds the problem is when people try to take voltage and then they take the amperage and they multiply them by each other and start defining the watts. This is completely counterproductive when you're trying to define something as light or a magnetic field because wattage is simply amps times volts. What's the problem? Well, if I take 100 volts, multiply them by one amp, I have one result, which will give me light. If I take one volt and I multiply by 100 amps, I get a magnetic field. They are two completely different things. However, they end up with the same wattage in the end. So what's the best way to take the confusion out of all of this? The way that I usually handle this is I explain to people based on what the energy actually creates. If there's a low amount of amps in something, it's more of a static volt. If there's more amps in something, it's more of a magnetic volt. Let's take these two coils as an example. They're defined as an AC coil and a DC coil. However, Neither one of them put out AC voltage or DC voltage. They put out a magnetic pulse and a sine wave. However, the sine wave is not AC voltage. Let's try to better define this. These are all DC flyback coils. This one is run on AC to a ballast to a DC flyback. Then we run it to a spark gap. The second one is a 24 volt battery, a ZVS, and a DC flyback. Again, we run that to a spark gap. This last one is a DC power pack to a ZVS to a DC flyback. And then it'll go on to the spark gap as well. This is the energy being created from the ballast circuit, which had AC plugged into it. The voltage coming out of it would be considered more of a static volt because the volts are high and the amps are low. The middle one is being created by the 24 volt battery. The bottom one is being created by the DC power pack, 18 volts, 3 amps. Both of them are still considered mostly static volts because they're high volts and very low amps. All three of these are considered a DC flyback circuit by everyone. So why is that definition wrong? If they were simply defining how the energy is put in and they use that as a definition for the coil, then that would be right because they are all DC circuits. However, it falls apart when you get to an AC flyback. So if it's not the circuit that creates it, is it the voltage itself? As we look at this, we see voltage that travels through the air in a spark gap. DC voltage, by its very nature, cannot do that. DC, or direct current, is a closed loop system. It requires 
positive to go through everything and then go back to negative. So the most accurate way to define this voltage is that it's a magnetic pulse and it has high volts and low amps. So not necessarily a DC voltage. I would consider this mostly a static volt. So what about the AC flyback? Is the voltage coming out of it AC? This is our AC flyback connected to our ZVS and is connected to a power pack. 18 volts, 3 amps. Do we have voltage? Yes, we do. Is it AC coming out? No, it's not. This is the point where most people are just going to lose their mind. I do not consider this AC voltage coming out. Yes, there's a sine wave. Yes, there's magnetics in it. Yet I do not consider it AC voltage. This is the same voltage that's being created with the DC flyback that you're creating with the AC flyback. The only difference is the DC flyback gives you a higher amount of volts and the AC flyback gives you a higher amount of amps. So, a little bit different on the amps and volts, yet it's the same energy. It's not AC or DC. It's actually a new form of energy that should be defined in its own way. To better understand why, let's go back to the representation of electromagnetic waves. But this time, let's fix this so it actually makes sense. We'll start by removing everything, and let's just define the volts and the amps. This is how I would define high volts and low amps. So on this end of the spectrum, the energy produced would be more like a laser or light. So now, let's put in more amps than volts. We're going to get a total different result. At this end of the spectrum, we're going to get more of a magnetic coil, or an electromagnet. So now let's look at the full spectrum. Why does it make more sense? Because at one side, you're getting a laser or light. As we move further down the line, but not quite to the center, you're going to find your AC voltage, which is basically your wall plug. And as you get to the complete opposite side, you're going to get your magnetic coil, or your electromagnet. So why do I like defining it this way much more than defining it this way? It really comes down to how you see voltage and how it's created. All of the elements that go into it to create the voltage. We know there's frequency. We know there's heat that comes out of it. We know there's magnetism. We know there's amps, we know there's sound, we know there's radiation, we know that there's charges in it, and we also know that there's volts. But just knowing that they're present is not enough. You're going to have to know that by changing the frequency, you're going to change the amount of volts and the amount of amps that it's receiving. You're also going to change the charge in it, whether it's charge or whether it's magnetics. It's also going to change whether there's sound coming from it or just frequency. It will also change whether there's heat coming from it or if it goes all the way to the scale where it's radiation. Normally you would say for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. However, in this case when you're building voltage, you're not just getting one reaction, you're getting multiple reaction. This thing is more like a flow of energy than it is just changing volts and amps. I understand that the way I see things is completely unconventional to anyone else. However, it makes perfect sense in how things work. For every little bit of action, it doesn't matter if it's one volt, one amp, for every bit of movement, it changes the entire process. This whole thing is like a combination lock. You have to put it in the right place for the right effect. So what do we do with these two flyback coils? What do we understand them as? I guess the simple answer is this. I'm going to define them as AC and DC so that I can talk to people and they understand me. However, the energy coming out, I'm still going to define it 
as more of a static volt versus more of a magnetic volt. That way, they can truly understand the process of what's going on. To be completely honest with you, I hope science looks at something like I did here and starts adapting it into their models. That way we can truly see the form of everything as we build it. And we can truly put things in there that make sense. That's my hope in this. But we'll see. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things and have yourself a great day. Thank you.